So today I'd like to share with you how I would go about mixing some colors for a landscape. And yesterday I was out painting and that's why I have some sunburned hands here. And I took a photo of a really epic landscape. So that's what we're gonna use as a reference and I'm just gonna mix up some of the main colors and show you how I would do that using this palette. And this is a glass palette and on the back side I have an acrylic mid-tone gray that primed it. That way uh, I don't have to worry about white or black. Uh, you know, met throwing off the values of my colors. And on the palette here I have titanium white, cadmium lemon, alizarin permanent, transparent red oxide, and ultramarine blue. That's really all you need uh, for like a really limited palette. There's other colors you can add in as well and I'll go over that a little bit later. So for now let's get into how I would mix some of these main colors. So what I like to do before I just start jumping into mixing colors, I like to kind of look at my scene and observe it. So I'm looking at the values that are involved in the scene. So the sky compared to the ground, compared to the trees or the mountains, the shadows, uh, is there any depth or distance, is there atmospheric perspective? There's all these things I like to take into consideration. And in this particular scene, there's actually some snow. So snow, the snow in this scene is gonna be the lightest thing. So I'm gonna start there. For the snow, it's basically titanium white, and you can add in some sort of uh, warm type of color. Just if there's warm light, uh, this is a warm sunny day. So I could add in just a touch of uh, transparent oxide red just to warm it up. Something very simple like that. And that may even be too warm. You know, it's almost looking like a skin tone. So, you know, it's something very subtle. You can even do you can do bright white out of the tube if you'd like, but I try to stay away from using white straight from the tube. So it's some sort of warm color. I could mix in a touch of yellow if I wanted, uh, but this is a cooler yellow, so that might not be something I would want to do. So if we had, if we didn't, ha if we had more of a cadmium uh, yellow medium on the palette rather than this lemon, that's a different color you can switch out, and it'll give you different greens. It'll give you different oranges. Um, you know, any color mixture mixed with the yellow is going to give you a slightly different color and I may show some of that here uh, soon. So some sort of snow color like that, you could use white uh, mixed with transparent red oxide, some sort of warm colors. Um, next, maybe the sky. So ultramarine and a touch of white. We're probably going to need a lot, of ultra, or a lot of white, so sometimes you want to just use a little bit of the strong color. That way you don't use a ton of white in the mixtures as I'm doing here. So you see I, had, I would have used a lot more paint there to get some sort of sky color. So this is a good base for a sky color and one, one thing to think about is color variety within your mixtures and while you're painting. So this could be a good base of a sky color but maybe as I'm painting I'd like to take some of that color and maybe mix in um, you know, I can tinge it to green a little bit as it gets towards the horizon. And see, not even, I don't even have to mix it all the way, just having some sort of little variety in there. It may be difficult to see on the camera. You know, I could even mix in a little bit of, this alizarin permanent is very strong. But if I just mixed in a really small touch of that, you know, you can start getting more magentas. So my point is, having slight variations within your, in your colors and your mixtures, is gonna help give it a little more excitement than just having a, a boring uh, blue sky by itself. Um, you can even use a different kind of blue as well. If you wanted to add on your palette like a, some kind of turquoise, that would really mix that into that. Um, you could add uh, phthalo blue or cobalt blue and those would give you kind of a different kind of blue and once you have both of those there, you could use both of them uh, you know, at different parts of the sky really give it a dynamic appearance of a sky. And also you're gonna wanna, as the sky moves down to the horizon, it's gonna lighten slightly. And like I said, there might be more yellow in that mixture. And as it, it moves up toward uh, the atmosphere, you know, away from the horizon, you're gonna get a lot more saturated with your blue. So something like that. So you can definitely get these differences and uh, I can show you some examples of my paintings that I've done, uh, just having a variation of color and value in the sky and uh, differences of color. Um, so it'd probably be a little bit lighter than that, but I think you guys get the idea. You know, it's having that color variation, the color variety, and that's gonna give it that appearance of nature. 
uh, kind of having a broken color effect. So there's a lot of trees in this scene. Let's move to the trees. There's a lot of trees. Some are in the distance and then some are much closer to us. So we want to make sure we vary the, the temperature of the greens. So obviously I'm going to start out with a base green just to see what kind of green color am I going to get from ultramarine and the lemon yellow. So we see we kind of get this cooler type of green, even if I had a little bit more yellow in there. Yeah, you get this cooler green. So for an experiment, I'm gonna add this cadmium yellow medium on my palette here, and we'll see what kind of different greens we get. So that's the cad, ultramarine and um, cad lemon. So now let's do ultramarine, cadmium yellow medium. Let's see how different the green is gonna be. So we can see we're getting a little bit of a difference there between the warms and the cools. This one's a lot more gray uh, because there's more orange and red in that yellow. It's a little bit warmer, so it's kind of neutralizing that green. So we can see there's a, a, quite a difference there in the types of greens you can get depending on the yellows you use and the blues that you use. So that's very interesting. Let's, add, let's have some fun here. Let's add this turquoise. This turquoise is actually just a mixture, reading the pigment on the back, it's phthalo blue with phthalo green. So this is a very strong color, and I only bought it uh, just to play around with and experiment. You know, if I'm painting some kind of alpine lake that's very turquoise blue, I thought, oh, maybe I could use this or something. And it's a lot stronger than you're gonna get anything else on the palette. But most of nature is very grayed down. It's not very strong. So let's add a little bit of turquoise, and now we can see how much stronger that green is with the lemon yellow. You guys seeing that difference there? That is just very strong and very cold. Um, it's just a completely different kind of green. So I'm gonna do the same thing, the cadmium medium, cadmium yellow medium, excuse me. Let's see what kind of green we get here. And this is just a base green. This is not, you know, I haven't mixed any white into it. I haven't mixed any other neutralizing colors. And interestingly enough, the turquoise and the cadmium yellow medium almost match the ultramarine and cadmium yellow lemon. So that's, that's interesting to take note of. But we can see the variety of greens just by changing the blues or the yellows. So now we can take, uh, most greens in nature are gonna have some sort of red mixed into them, uh, especially as they move toward you for the most part. And let's do the, uh, the trees in the foreground. So I'm gonna start with the ultramarine here. And the photo doesn't capture the color very well, but it was a very red, green. So I'm going to use this cadmium yellow medium. And one thing I can do to kind of modify this green so that it looks a little bit more natural and it's not so, you know, odd looking, I can add a touch of this transparent red oxide and that can warm up the green a bit. And it just gives it, and you know, you want variety in your trees as well. You know, all these mixtures, you're going to have little variety of each pile. So for mo some of the tree, we'll have sort of this darker green appearance. And then as it gets toward the light, we can have uh, more of a, a yellow green. And then this is more of a brownish yellow, red green. So that's kind of for the foreground trees and the light in the shadows, it's gonna be much darker, maybe even cooler. So a lot of ultramarine, some transparent red oxide, and that's gonna give us kind of a very dark brownish black and then we can make that, you know, we can mix a little bit of this yellow in there and that kind of gives it a little tinge of green. So that can be for the shadows of that tree in the foreground. So in the distance, how do we create this atmospheric perspective? You know, on the mountains, this, these mountains covered with trees. Well, there's gonna be a lot more blue and it's definitely gonna be cooler. So I'm gonna do this yellow, lemon yellow but actually, um, yellow kind of disappears the more you go in the distance. Yellow is going to disappear and fade out, so we don't want it this strong. So we want to kind of neutralize that. We can either use this alizarin permanent, which is very strong. Uh, I like using the transparent red oxide. I almost never use alizarin permanent outdoors. It just depends. Um, instead of alizarin permanent, you can also use kind of a cadmium red medium. Um, it just gives you more grays when you mix uh, purples and stuff. You know, it's, it can be a lot easier to use because this alizarin 
uh, for outdoor landscape painting can be very strong. So now I kind of neutralize that green with the transparent red oxide. I can lighten it up a bit here with some white. And you'll see how gray this green actually is. So there's the difference in greens we can get from a foreground and then this is showing more atmospheric perspective. You know, we're getting more distance in there. We can even add more blue to it, you know, depending on how far away something is. You really want to observe, make sure you get the value structure correct um, so that it reads correctly in your painting. But I just want to give you guys here kind of a, an overview of, of how to mix these colors and some of the variations you're going to see, um, you're going to get you know, having these warmer tones coming forward, these cooler tones going back, you know, different variation in the sky. Uh, for a landscape like this, it's mostly yellows and greens and blues. Uh, the little bit of the lake down there, you know, that's gonna be much darker than the sky value actually. Uh, and it's gonna be a little bit more neutralized. So I'm gonna start off with ultramarine blue with a little bit of transparent red oxide to, to kind of neutralize it. And what that means is it's just graying it down. I'm making a gray. And then adding a touch of white here, seeing where my saturation level is at. Because that, that lake color is, is a lot more gray and I can always add a little bit touch of blue in there. So now we're getting this kind of blue gray and that's kind of the color of that lake. And like I said, if I need it to be a little more of a blue green, I can add in you know just a very touch of yellow small touch of yellow. So now I'm getting these blue greens and then just a variation of values there. I can have kind of a darker tone of it and then a lighter mixture of it as well. And I could use that for the lake. So this is kind of the overall harmony of that scene. Uh, you know, once you have the colors pre-mixed, you know, just showing some different greens. Let's, let's push these greens a little bit further. You know, I can warm up some of these cooler greens and that was a lot of warmth there. That was almost too warm. Let's take some of this and show you how to just neutralize this green. So there, by adding this to that cooler green, I actually get the same color as adding uh, cadmium yellow medium. So it's not always necessary to have so many colors on your palette, but just seeing with you know just a few, three or four colors here, you can really get a good variety of, of colors for landscapes. You can create some great paintings. So one last thing, we also have some rocks in the foreground and some kind of gray bushes. So the rocks are very light value. They're almost the value of the snow, but they're basically browns, transparent red oxide, and a little touch of blue. So this will give you kind of uh, gray rocks. You can either push them to be warmer, push them to be cooler. You know, there's a lot of var variety in rocks. So we can have a warmer mixture like that. I can make one that has a little more blue in it so I can get a cooler mixture. You know, it's, it's really just about color temperature and grays. Having this uh, warmer gray and a cooler gray for the rocks, you know, pretty simple like that. And you can just mix, you can make a more yellow rock, a more red rock, you know, blue, brown rock, and just add white to it. So it's that simple for the rocks. And for these gray bushes in the front, we can do the same thing. So it's gonna be some kind of blue, a little bit of brown. I'm actually gonna, push those bushes in the foreground to have a little bit more red in them, uh, just to give variety to the scene, because it's so green and blue. Um, you know, adding a little bit of alizarin there and making these bushes just slightly more red, uh, having this, this red gray, I think would give it a lot, give this scene a lot more interest. And the bushes are near us, so uh, having them be a little bit warmer, you know, it's just gonna add more interest to this, this painting overall this this photograph, how I would paint this. So like I said, for red, see that gives a nice, well-rounded harmony there. So we're kind of touching every part of this palette. We have kind of a purpley red, red violet, and I can even push that uh, a little bit further. I can take some of this and I can uh, add some transparent red oxide, really warm it up slightly. And if I want to gray that down, I can add blue to it, add white to it to lighten it up. See, so now we have a variety in the bushes as well. You know, this kind of cooler mixture and then a warmer mixture. That's kind of what I'm talking about here, like with the sky, I have like, you know, a warmer mixture as it goes toward the horizon, it's gonna be lighter, cooler mixture as it moves up toward the sky. Same with the trees here, you can have a cooler greens, warmer greens, kind of just, you know, mix them around. You know, add this warmer green in with this cooler green, and you'll just get a lot of variety in your trees and in your, your brushwork. 
and uh, bushes in the foreground, these rocks. So that's kind of the overall harmony of this scene. So anyway, I hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions, just let me know down below in the comments. Be sure to check out my other color mixing videos as well. Take care of yourself. Peace.